Hey everybody, Ben here. Uh, it's Tuesday night. I'm sitting in uh, my game room. I was just doing some organizing after that big PS1 haul on our last video. And I thought uh, for this video, I uh, wanted to do a video just about my PlayStation 1 collection, which you can see I'm sitting mostly in front of. There's some long box games in a different position as well. I thought it would be a good idea to go through my collection in a little more in depth and talk about a few things. First, I was going to talk about the five games in my collection that are just the most expensive that I own and talk a little bit about how I got them, the circumstances, etc. Um, uh, give you some details about what I think about them, things like that. As well as go through five games that are maybe uh, not nearly as expensive, but I think you should probably buy, especially if you're getting into PlayStation 1 collecting. You want to be able to buy cool quality games that are nice to have, but maybe don't you know break the bank entirely. So let's go through both. Um, if you're liking these types of videos, please let me know. I mean, this is a new type of video for me. I just thought it'd be interesting for people. Um, it would really help if you hit the like button or, or the thumbs up button to let uh, the YouTube algorithm know that you're liking the video because that way more people will see it. Uh, leave a comment. Tell me your thoughts. Are there really expensive games that you own uh, on PS1 that you think I should get? Or maybe some hidden gems that I don't know about that I should add to my collection? Uh, put it in the comments. And make sure to subscribe. Um, we're at, as of the time of recording, I think 645 subscribers or 630 some subscribers. I don't even remember. But uh, we've added a lot of people since the last video. So ho hoping to add a, uh, that much more and get to 1,000 subs for, uh, soon. So anyway, uh, that's it. Let's get into the games. All right, so it's actually a couple days later. Uh, I wanted to take some time after I recorded that intro uh, to actually play a few of these and get some impressions, write a few things down, etc. Uh, I also wanted to mention one more thing. Uh, I mentioned in the last video, I'm going to the Too Many Games Game Swap in King of Prussia, Pennsylvania. I think I called it Oaks, Pennsylvania last time, which is where the main convention is. I don't really know Pennsylvania all that well. I just know it's a couple hours from my house to drive there. So anyway, I'm going there on June 27th. I'm going to try and get there, you know, relatively early, see all the vendors, uh, maybe do a few trades. You know, a couple people commented uh, on uh, the YouTube video and on Instagram that they're going to be there. So... Uh, look out for me. Uh, send me a DM on Instagram or something, or leave a comment or something if you actually want to say hello, or maybe work out a trade. I was thinking about bringing a bunch of my doubles uh, with me to see if anybody wants to swap some stuff while I'm there. I don't have a vendor booth or anything like that, um, but maybe I can work something out. Anyway, uh, with uh, all that uh, said, let's get into it. So uh, the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to go through first the five games uh, that I recommend, I'm going to sort of swap out. So we'll do first a game I recommend to buy that's inexpensive, and then we're going to get into something that's a lot more expensive, and I'll tell you the story behind it. I even have some notes here that I took, just so that I make sure I get some of the numbers and figures right as I go through these things, so bear with me on it. All right, without further ado, the first game I recommend uh, in terms of looking at for picking up, um, this is uh, Bubble Bobble, uh, also featuring Rainbow Islands on uh, PlayStation 1. This game is about uh, $25 complete in box, so really not all that expensive. You know, that's a pretty moderately priced game. Maybe if you're lucky, you go to a game store on the right day of sale or a convention or something like that. Maybe you can get it cheaper. Uh, maybe, you, can, you know, if you're lucky, you can get it in that uh, $15 range. Anyway, what is this? Uh, this is essentially uh, the original arcade versions of Bubble Bobble and Rainbow Islands, which is technically Bubble Bobble 2. You know, there's Bubble Bobble 2 on the NES, which is not exactly Bubble Bobble 2. That's what Rainbow Islands is supposed to be. It's all confusing. It doesn't really matter. Anyway, both are fun arcade games. And then they have a remake of Rainbow Islands that's kind of got diff different graphics, which I thought was also appealing. Uh, I went in and played this game for a few minutes. I thought it was really pretty. The sound was good. You know, it has that great old-style arcade sound to it. And overall, I thought it was a pretty good game. Definitely worthy for a collection and a little bit unique. So uh, I don't believe uh, Rainbow Islands in particular is really on any other consoles. I could be totally wrong about that. But I think that's worth picking up, uh, especially if you're a fan of Bubble Bobble on the uh, NES. All right, so for the first expensive game that we're going to get into that I own in my collection, uh, I'm going to show you uh, Suikoden 2. So this is the fifth most expensive game in my collection. This is according to uh, my Game Eye database, which I think pulls the prices from price charting. You can see it's incomplete in box, great shape. There's a little sticker stuff on the on the plastic, but that doesn't matter. Uh, the disc is pristine. Um, uh, this is an amazing game, uh, amazing RPG. Highly recommended. I'm a big fan of all the Suikoden games. Uh, they are JRPGs where you uh, form a party uh, in most games of six characters, actually, at any given time. And they all tend to attack when you after you input the uh, commands. 
Uh, oftentimes, they actually execute their attacks at the same time. The other big deal about the Suikoden uh, series and, and Suikoden 2 is uh, that there are 108 characters to get to form your party, and you build a fort, sort of a base in each of these games that you sort of build up with different skills and jobs and people who do things to contribute towards your army. There's also these big army versus army battles in each game where it's like kind of a quasi mini strategy game, uh, which isn't too complicated as well, but there are real implications because sometimes your actual characters can die in these battles. Anyway, uh, Suikoden 2 is an amazing game. And right now, according to the price I took down at the time, uh, this is going for $368 complete, which is quite expensive. Uh, to be honest, uh, pretty much none of the games here I would recommend uh, anybody spend the actual price on unless you really have a lot of excess money and you wouldn't feel bad about losing it. Because while Suikoden 2 is an amazing game, there are other ways to play it. I mean, you can download it on PlayStation Network, I think, on PS3, if that's still up. Um, I would even, you know, I'm not saying uh, do piracy either, but I could understand if you got the, uh, were able to play the game through some other method. Uh, just because it's a great game, uh, but that's just a lot of money to spend. Um, totally a great experience. I'll never sell my copy. It's too close to me. I don't care what it's worth. Um, that's a game I bought when it came out in the late 90s. Um, I was given some money uh, during the holidays, I think a gift card to Electronics Boutique, and I decided to spend it on Suikoden. So anyway, uh, for the second game uh, I recommend you pick up for your collection, it is uh, Irritating Stick, and this goes for about $22. It is a very weird cover. As you can see, it's made by Jalico. Uh, they're, I know, I know them for bases loaded. Uh, what is this game? Uh, in Japan, there's like this weird, um, game show where it's sort of like the game, board game operation, where you have to hold a stick and bring it through a course without touching the edges. Otherwise it, it shocks and then you lose the game. So in Irritating Stick, you do this and it's just a very fine precision game where you guide, you have 60 seconds to guide the stick through the course without touching the side. And it's pretty challenging. You know, I played the game for about 30 minutes uh, when I was warming up for this. And I did get through uh, a couple levels. But it takes real focus and challenge. I like those games. I don't mind games like a Celeste or something like that or Meat Boy where you uh, try and try and you're going to fail a lot and then you uh, accomplish things. So that's kind of what Irritating Stick is like. And again, it only goes for, I think, about $22. The next game, this fourth highest, uh, most expensive game in my collection is uh, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure on PS1. Uh, another awesome game. Uh, you may be familiar with the JoJo's uh, anime or manga, and uh, I'm a big fan of that as well, which inspired me to get the game. Uh, the way I got this game is I paid $80 cash, which was about what it was going for at the time, maybe a little bit lower, to my friend Sean, who uh, was given it by a friend, and he decided he would be willing to sell it to me. Well, to be honest, I kind of got the better half of that. I mean, I certainly didn't know at the time but now JoJo's Bizarre Adventure goes for a little over $400 uh, uh, complete on eBay. It really went up in price, probably because the anime really picked up and people were curious about the series. The fighting game is awesome. I, again, don't recommend buying it because you can get this through other means. Um, for a while, it was on Xbox Live Arcade. I believe there are different ways uh, to play it. Um, so, you know, find other ways to play it. It's really cool. Capcom-style Street Fighter Marvel vs. Capcom-ish fighting game. Uh, amazing game, a lot of fun, but really too expensive uh, for the average person. Uh, the next game I recommend for anybody's collection, and for when I say affordable games, I'm thinking games that if you were you know comparable to what you'd pay for a game, a used game in a game store like a GameStop or something, uh, is uh, Super Puzzle Fighter 2 Turbo. Uh, this game goes for about forty one dollars according to price charting. Um, this is one of my all time favorite games. Uh, it's a uh, just a color matching. Uh, break uh, uh, puzzle game. Um, essentially, you build b bigger colored gems and then you use a breaker gem to destroy them where you attack your opponent, much like you do so in a fighting game, and then stack things on their side. Very easy to get into, uh, simple to learn, difficult to master kind of thing. Uh, fun multiplayer. You can get into it with anybody, uh, regardless of skill. Uh, very colorful, very easy to play over and over and over again. I play this game uh, fairly regularly, you know, I mean, not all the time, but Every so often I play this for like an hour or so, and I love it. It's one of my all-time favorites. $41, pick it up. Um, the next, uh, the third most highest, uh, most expensive game in my collection is Clock Tower 2 for the PlayStation 1. You know, it's funny, um, so this is a bad game. I wouldn't recommend buying it pretty much at any price except a cheap price. Um, 
Uh, it would be, honestly, if I really needed the cash, it would probably be one of the games that I would sell first. Um, this is a, technically it's not Clock Tower 2. I believe this is another game that they called Clock Tower 2 for its American release. It's pretty hard to find though. Uh, the way I acquired it was um, there was a local guy here in Maryland who had it and was interested in trading it. At the time he wanted N64 games. It's funny because I was on Facebook and I took a picture of this to share on Facebook at the time, it was about two years ago when I made this trade. And um, I got this and I think Ogre Battle on PlayStation 1 for um, a few N64 games and I think Luigi's Mansion or something. And I got the better end of that trade. I didn't know I was getting the better end of that trade. This was just a game I, I needed. I didn't have for the collection that was hard to find. And I had a bunch of these N64 games. So uh, I really wouldn't recommend it. It's a technically, I guess, a horror game, um, but it's not good like Silent Hill or, or Clock Tower 1 for that matter. Um, but it's interesting. If you like, if you're into quote unquote bad games for the, for the lulls or something like that, maybe uh, you could find some enjoyment out of it. But I certainly wouldn't recommend paying even close to full price from it. It's just not that good of a game. Uh, the next game I would recommend you get for your collection, and this one is very cheap, is NFL Blitz. Uh, this game is about 10 bucks. And let me tell you, you know, just like NBA Jam, uh, it has the exact same aesthetic where you could just jump in, have a sports arcade type experience. You don't, know, you don't need to know a whole lot about football. You don't need to be particularly skilled at games. The, there's only a few buttons to learn. Um, you know, there's, no, there's a very low... Uh, skill floor for it. Um, it's extremely common and I booted this up and I tell you I played through a whole game and it was so much fun and I got right back into the experience. I kind of wanted to play it again. I have NFL Blitz on a lot of different consoles. I really like arcade style sports games like an NBA Jam, like an NFL Blitz or NHL Hits or uh, maybe uh, even like Bases Loaded and things like that. I just have a fondness for simple fast arcade sports games that you can play with friends. This one definitely qualifies and you should pick it up. The second most expensive game in my collection on PS1 is Valkyrie Profile. Uh, this is in great shape. Uh, this is a very good RPG. Uh, Enix, so before Square bought Enix, uh, this was an Enix RPG. You know, at that time, late 90s PlayStation, there were a lot of uh, JRPGs coming out from Enix, Working Design, Square, uh, other companies. Um, and this is one of them. This is definitely a lot harder to find. I believe this was ported to the PSP, a much, I think, if I'm not mistaken, it's a much cheaper uh, game on PSP, so I'd probably recommend you pick it up there. Uh, you might be able to download it too on PlayStation Network, probably a better way to get it. Uh, this one, I think, goes for about $425 right now, complete in box. I also got this uh, through a trade a few years ago. It was the same guy who traded me Clock Tower. He was getting out of PlayStation 1, and I have to tell you, a few years ago, um, you know, I'm going through PS1 now and a lot of my most expensive games. A lot of these games were got, uh, picked up around three, four years ago uh, when the market just wasn't as hot for PlayStation 1 games. And so my advice to you as a collector, uh, really for any of these games, is uh, make sure that you look for things that are really kind of underappreciated right now. Uh, right now, if I was starting a collection and I didn't have a whole lot of money, maybe I was a kid making minimum wage or something like that, I'd probably go for things like Nintendo Wii or Xbox 360. And I, I know a lot of people just dismiss this stuff. Uh, but there's going to be a time where some of those games are coveted, or maybe PS2 games, which have been on the rise. You know, a few years ago, you could get them a lot easier than you get them now, and I think they're on the way up. So think about that when you're out collecting. Anyway, the next game I recommend on PS1 uh, to get, and really it doesn't necessarily have to be this one, it could be almost any in the series, this is Wipeout Excel. This was one of the first sort of futuristic uh, arcade racing games. Uh, it's got these hover cars in it. You've got some weapons and acceleration, so kind of like a Mario Kart style, you know, uh, powers thing. You've got speed boost and stuff. It does have a damage meter, much like F-Zero, so you can't just ram into people. Your your uh, your anti-gravity racing car could explode or something like that if you beat it up too much. Uh, the big criticism I'd say of this is it's pretty simple. There aren't a lot of modes or tracks or things like that, which is kind of a thing at the time for, uh, you know, racing games, you know, they were pretty simple, but again, you're only going to pay maybe about 20 bucks for a game like this, and it's a lot of fun, you could play it multiplayer, uh, and you could maybe pick, pick it up, play it for a half hour, have a little fun with it, and put it down, same thing goes for Wipeout 3, or uh, the original Wipeout, although I think the original Wipeout might go for a little bit more in the long box version, but definitely a good game to have for the collection. The most expensive game in my PS1 collection right now is Klonoa, and at the time when I looked this up, uh, this was going for $563, which is insane. 
Um, I got this game several years ago at Second and Charles. I think I paid maybe 30 bucks for it. And that was a pretty good deal at the time. I think the game was going in like the $50 or $60 range. And they had it underpriced. I was like, you know, this is a good game. Uh, it's a fun platformer. I want it. It'd be a good game for my collection. But I have to say, over the past year, maybe two years, this game has skyrocketed in price. I, I do think it's pretty hard to find. I don't see it every day. Uh, is I don't imagine it's the most rare PlayStation 1 game, but it's probably pretty hard to find. Uh, they don't. They, have, they remade it on the Wii. Um, which is probably a better version to buy, although that's kind of expensive now, too. I've got that one as well. Um, but at least it's cheaper than this one. There's probably a way to download it from the PlayStation Store, I'm guessing. It's a really good game. I mean, that's probably part of the reason it's gone up so much, is that it's both hard to find and actually a really fun game that's worth playing and holds up. Uh, basic platformer. Um, really kind of, I think all the Klonoa games kind of flop for Namco. Uh, there is a rumor I've heard that Klonoa might be coming back in some form. I'm guessing if it comes back, it's going to be some sort of HD remake of Klonoa, which people might be disappointed with. Um, you know, look, for $563, I can't recommend anybody buy these games. I mean, you you see the theme that I have for most of these expensive games. I picked them up when they were much cheaper, either when they came out at retail price, or maybe I got them in a trade or something, or um, they just weren't appreciated as much at the time. And that's pretty much the way to go with a lot of these games. I don't really recommend spending, unless you have money that you really don't mind throwing away and not seeing for a while. I mean, you have to make a lot of money or just be very comfortable spending three or four hundred dollars on a game at one time, which even I am not that comfortable doing. I really don't recommend going for these high-end games. There's other ways to play them. And as far as the value and investment things, uh, that's all very sketchy. I mean, who knows in time what these games are going to be worth. I like game collecting because I like to play games. It's fun to get rare and hard to find and things that are theoretically expensive, but that's not why I'm in this. I'm in this to build a collection and have fun with it and sort of see where it goes. And that's what I have enjoyed the hobby so much for the past 20 years or whatever. Anyway, that's it. Those are uh, the five most expensive games in my PS1 collection, as well as five games I recommend. I hope you like this video. This is totally different for me. I haven't done a video like this before. I know people were asking... Uh, about stuff like this, you know what, you know, break down your collections, tell us about your favorite things. If you like this, please let me know. Um, let me know if there's other things, you know, for PlayStation 1 that you like or the most things, expensive things in your collection, things I should pick up, whatever. I really like to hear more from you on it. Uh, please subscribe to the channel, it really helps. Um, uh, anyway, yeah, all that engagement really helps me and it makes me uh, pretty happy. Again, remember, I'll be at Too Many Games Game Swap in, uh, on the 27th. And uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, enjoy, be safe out there, and take care, and have a good one. Bye-bye.